If some kid gets him, he has a less chance of surviving. I thought he was dead. He's kind of just staying on his side. I'm not sure if he was even getting oxygen. He may be blind. Everyone right now, comment down below. Good luck to Lucky. Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. Whoa, my morning voice is still here. <clears throat> Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. So today's video is a little bit sad, but a little bit happy, I guess. Yesterday I went to PetSmart because I was picking up a glow beta tank because I'm gonna be setting that up. As you guys know, that's the next video I was supposed to be posting. It will be the one after this, but I had to go pick up that stuff from a PetSmart that isn't my local one. I went there and this is what happened. All right, so I am currently in PetSmart. I was here to pick up a glow beta tank that I'm setting up. And I come in here and I see that there's this one glow male because I was trying to see like, you know, how healthy they are here. And this one definitely has swim bladder and he's still very lively and everything. It's just that he has to stay at the top of the tank on his side. So I think I'm gonna try and rescue him because honestly, if some kid gets him, he's just gonna, he has a less chance of surviving. Swim water can be treatable, but we'll talk about it when we get back. This is him right here. I don't know if you guys can see, he's kind of on his side. He's still alive, still swimming. His fins look all good. He just definitely has swim bladder. They probably fed him too much and um, he can't digest it because I'm going to go ahead and pick up what I need to. Okay, so my girlfriend has him right now and I thought he was dead, like I said, but he's kind of just staying, <laughs> he's kind of just staying on his side and coming up to the surface and everything, but it's obviously his swim bladder. So I'm hoping to go ahead and rehabilitate him. Now, in order to do this to help him, he is a really small fish, so I think that using, trying to use a needle on such a tiny part of his body would probably be a little too dangerous, but if it comes to that, we will try it. Hopefully we can save this little guy but i will see you guys at the fish room all right guys so right now i am in the fish room got back here and uh our betta our little he's doing okay and i actually decided that i'm gonna go ahead and keep the betta with me because i don't live with my fish i'm not gonna get into all that right now but unfortunately i'm not able to live with my fish so i do have to come here i do have to come here and feed all the fish and take care of the tanks and everything but because it has swim bladder and it is like a sick fish i'd rather keep it with me for the three days because it does need three days to actually clear out its system so i want to keep it with me i'm going to set up a little little home for it in my bedroom at my house so i can go ahead and uh keep an eye on it 24 7 for the three days after if it doesn't get better for three days then we're gonna go ahead and you know we may have to remove air with a needle or something so yeah i guess i'll see you guys at my house when i set up the uh little tank for this guy so yeah this right here is the betta as you can see he's kind of like staying near the top he keeps like kind of rolling over a little bit and he has a hard time staying upright when he's swimming. I'm supposed to be getting a glow beta anyway for the glow beta tank. So if anything, if this one survives this whole swim bladder problem and is healthy and everything, I obviously am going to keep it no matter what, but I'll keep it and put it into the glow beta tank instead of buying a healthy one. Also, like I said in the other clips, swim bladder is so common and so many fish get it just from simply overfeeding them and some other things as well, but I'll get into that later. But yeah, it's the next morning and as you can see, he's still like Staying near the top, he seems to be doing a little bit better. Um, I'm not sure if he did go to the bathroom, but um, he has been doing a little bit better. I've been seeing him able to swim a little bit around the cup without like tipping over or anything. And he's still breathing, of course, so that's always a good thing. But yeah, let's go ahead and um, go to the store and get something else to put this little guy in. I don't want to put him in an actual tank. I need to be able to monitor him for the next few days until he gets better. I don't want to set up an entire tank because a fish with swim bladder, they need to be able to reach the surface as easy as possible. So they need shallow-ish water. Also, they don't need a huge volume of water because they're trying to get better. So it's kind of like a hospital tank. They don't need a filter or I'm not going to put an air pump in mine just because he's staying at the surface and breathing. If he was staying at the bottom, I would put the air pump but the thing is, is that those bubbles and everything are going to cause a current and he's already weak as it is. So I don't want to stress him out even more and make it so he can't even swim. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, head to the store, find something to put this little guy in. And I have an idea for something else that I want to get at another store that I think will really help him because he's staying at the top. I don't know. Comment down below what you guys think it is. Lucky. I named him Lucky. I don't know if I already said that. Let's head to the store and um, get Lucky some stuff to make a little hospital tank for him to make him feel better. Let's go. All right, so now as you guys can see, we are in Walmart and I need to find a container that is somewhat shallow and also I need to be able to stick something to it, which you guys will understand in a second. I don't know, I gotta look through all these containers and try and find the best one to uh, help out this better. All right, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and just get this one right here. It's like 88 cents. This is a lot bigger than the cup it is in, but also I'll be able to see because it's mostly, you know, just clear plastic. So we're gonna grab this and I'm just gonna grab the top because it comes with it anyway. 
just in case I use it for something else. But now I'm gonna go ahead and grab a gallon of water. All right, so I got the container and a gallon of water. It is distilled, or no, it's spring water. It's spring water, which you can use for fish without using like dechlorinated because it's already like dechlorinated and everything like that. So, so now I'm gonna go over to the other store and you guys can see what we're gonna get for this beta to really help them along with the recovery process. So let's go over there now. All right, so right here is a little beta hammock and as you can see, it like attaches to it, it can rest on it. And I think this will be perfect to uh, help it get better. So let's get this and uh, get back to the room. All right, so just got the leaf right here, as you guys saw, and the person that was checking me out was actually, like, really nice and everything, and I told her what was going on about, like, the betta and how it's having, like, swim bladder issues, because she was asking if, you know, bettas actually use it, and she wished me good luck, so his name is Lucky, she wished me good luck, it's just, just it's all good. All right, so I'm back in the room now, and we're gonna go ahead and set up the little hospital tank for Lucky. All right, so right here, we have what I'm gonna use for the little hospital tank. I also gotta take off this sticker. Satisfying. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it down real quick with some water and paper towels just to make sure there's nothing in here to hurt our little betta because obviously it's already, you know, not doing the greatest. We don't want anything from here to affect the fish. All right, so I just wiped it down so we should be good and I'm gonna put it probably just like this next to the geckos here. And as you can see, this container is a lot smaller than this one, but I'm also not gonna have the water level obviously to the top or anything like that. Maybe up to like this line right here. I don't know if you guys can see that i don't think you can see it you like that idea lucky yeah i think he does all right so let's go ahead and take our water and pour it in here and get this going all right so as you can see there's probably about two and a half inches of water the fish isn't very like tall so this should be good but let's go ahead and open up this rinse it off and attach it into here and see if we have to add more water all right so i guess we just take this and attach it into here so I think I'm going to stick it right back here. Gives them enough room to lay on top of it or go under it. One of the main reasons that I did get the little leaf is because he is staying at the top. Some fish with swim bladder will stay at the bottom. I figured it would be perfect for him to be able to lay on it and be right near the surface so that he can kind of take a break from swimming when he needs to. So as you guys can see, he's staying right at the top. He's kind of on his side or he, you know, goes upright. But now what we need to do is go ahead and acclimate him to this water because we obviously don't want anything to go wrong we want everything to be as smooth as it can be so let's go ahead and acclimate them all right so to acclimate them i'm just gonna use this little bottle cap get a little bit of water in and just like really slowly kind of like drip it almost like a drip acclimation into here all right so i think he's fully acclimated now let's go ahead and get him in there so i can give you guys a closer look his condition and just some other things that i noticed about him well one of the things was this in fact i'm not really sure what this was but there's like stickers over the little like air holes i'm not sure if he was even getting oxygen at this point so i'm just gonna try and pour him in he's already by the side here so it shouldn't be too difficult i don't want to put him right in just like that all right so as you guys can see he's swimming somewhat okay Seems to be doing actually really well compared to yesterday at least. Now he's kind of under the leaf, but that wasn't really the purpose of it. <laughs> you gotta go on top of the leaf, buddy. Something that's kind of been like in discussion is, and everything is, are these glow bettas blind? Now, I don't really know for sure because obviously this little guy is pretty sick and we were holding it kind of close to our face and he wasn't swimming away or flaring or anything. So obviously he's not the healthiest, but also, I don't know if he's blind, so we're definitely gonna have to test that out and just kind of see when we are able to feed him again in a few days. We'll see if he can find the food, if he can see the food, like what that whole situation is, because I'm sure a lot of you are curious about these globettas, as am I. But his abdomen does look a little less bloated than it did yesterday, so I'm hoping that that's a good sign. Plus, having him in this, it'll be really easy to tell if he goes to the bathroom or not, and that's what we're hoping for. But I do want to show you guys something else about him. So I'm going to try and zoom in for you guys. But I don't know if you guys can tell, but his lungs are kind of like, they kind of have like a blackish color. And to be honest, they look a little less black already after putting him in here. He kind of does this where he'll just like stay at the top. Now, to answer your questions about swim bladder, because I think it's, you know, a pretty common thing in the fish world, especially for bettas. Number one, don't eat, overfeed your betta. So like how to prevent it is like don't overfeed your betta. Me personally, I feed them six out of seven days a week. Now that can look like you feed them three days, you skip a day, you feed them the next four. It can be whatever system that you want. I just don't recommend feeding them every day. And when you feed them, don't give them a lot. Unfortunately, I don't think bettas can really sense when they're full. And like I said, their stomachs are really small. So don't overfeed your fish. 
Also, the higher the water temperature, the more healthy I've noticed my bettas to be at the very least. Personally, I've seen my bettas thrive in pretty much like 72 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And now if you're wondering why they can't swim properly when they have the swim bladder issue, it is because their swim bladder is basically like, kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, but maybe like their center of gravity type of thing. It basically keeps them afloat. It keeps them able to swim correctly. And when that gets messed up, then obviously, you know, they're not able to swim right. It is curable at any stage of it. But obviously everyone has different ways of, you know, fixing it, curing it, whatever. I'm gonna start with the first step, which is to not feed the betta for three days. So I got it at the store. I'm gonna wait three days. And if I notice that it's a little bit better, I may try and feed it a little bit. If you notice that your fish isn't getting better, and I'm mainly talking about bettas here because any fish can get swim bladder, but bettas are very small. They are kind of delicate. Now, obviously there are things you can do like putting a needle into the swim bladder and extracting the air, but that's kind of dangerous on a fish that small. They can move really easily and it just won't work. But other than that, there are different things you can put in the water. You can feed them like peas and stuff to kind of help them to pass what they need to out of their body and to get that, rid of that oxygen that is trapped in their swim bladder. And for this little buddy right here, I'm just gonna kind of give him a few days, see if he goes to the bathroom if he's getting better. And then I'll kind of move on to like medication and stuff like that. But I personally don't like using a lot of chemicals or anything like that. But yeah, basically all this little guy needs to do for the next couple days is rest. Hopefully he'll use his little leaf right there. He keeps going under it. I don't think he's figured out that he can go on top of it yet. And that does kind of raise a little bit of speculation that he may be blind also because he isn't really sensing to go on top of it. He's only just kind of ended up under it and I don't think it's been on purpose. If I move my finger closer to him, he doesn't really go anywhere. He doesn't really sense that my finger's there, I don't think. I think it's just if I like, like how I accidentally hit this, I think he just senses the vibrations and stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and monitor Lucky pretty closely over the next few days. Everyone right now, comment down below, good luck to Lucky or like something like that. Wish him luck. Also to make sure he doesn't jump, I'm just gonna kind of place this on here a little bit. Hopefully he heals from this and I will be updating you guys in the next video that I post in two days when I set up the new globe at a tank. And I'll go ahead and update you guys on him and how he's doing and everything like that. I'm kind of going to document like a lot of it because I know in the past when I've rescued animals and fish and stuff, I haven't been the best at like doing the updates, but I got you guys this time. He's on top of his little leaf. Kind of. He's kind of on top of it. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and let him be. And I will see you guys in two days when I set up the new Guobetta tank and with a little update on him to see how he's doing. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.